Hello, welcome. My name's Phil Taylor from BodyLanguageMatters.com and today we're going to be looking at the Ghislaine Maxwell's interview from prison. This was this aired on Talk TV the other day and I, fa- I thought it was quite interesting to study because there's a lot of non-verbal cues, a lot of body language, a lot of shifts in behaviour in these short clips. Now I broke it down into clips so you can just see Ghislaine. Um, it's a bit shaky because obviously the, the cameras in prison aren't that great but we can get an idea of what's going on in her, in her head as well. And this, don't forget this is her one shot as well um, to sort of get out there to the public uh, her point or across that as well so just just to bear that in mind as well if you like it uh, please subscribe to the channel that that helps greatly and also drop some comments below i'm not going to know it all i'm not going to get it all Um, if you see something drop it in the comments ask a question so yeah thanks um, and we'll get into this now so this is shalane in uh, just talking about a day in prison so we'll take a look at, at this now so they wake you up at six. So right off the bat, I just want to go uh, about how she looks generally, been in prison for two years. I think it's about two years now. Um, and you can see that she's, she's dyeing her hair, right? You can see that her hair looks quite good in this. And also she's got some sort of makeup on. Um, you know, you can see her, her uh, eyelashes there. So she's being pruned. Um, and I guess she's got some makeup on. But also, just take a look at this weird background. What is it, a carousel or something? I don't know. But, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see. Anyway, we'll carry on. And you can go to breakfast which consists of a cereal. Um, So just to point out, this is a great way to sort of get a little mini baseline from her body language. So if people don't know what baseline is, it's just how she acts when she's being asked questions. Um, But already she's thinking about these things. So, you know, she's showing a studied look on on her face and also with her words. And I'm wondering, is is this studied look um, something to do with prison and the way she has to select the words, but we'll carry on. Anyway, we'll get to that. A fruit, a piece of fruit, generally. And then you have to make your bed sort of military style. So there's nothing that's sticking out or whatever. It has to be a prescribed way, otherwise you can to travel. That's um, the language there is quite interesting. A prescri- prescribed way to make your bed. Now, I don't I don't know about you, but I don't say that. Um, but so you can tell that she's from, or had had some sort of education. The way that her language is used as well, um, and the rhythm as well, which is quite interesting. I know she's uh, an Oxford uh, student, a graduate student. So yeah, yeah, it's quite high up in that as well. And you also the, the thing to think about with uh, this lady is. She's from a privileged background. She's, you know, she's had, she's obviously met all these, uh, or, or around all these sort of famous people and well-to-do people as well. So she's always had this idea of uh, of what a life should look like. So being in prison is going to be totally alien for her. But she's been there two years, so she should know the, the roundabouts, what's going on now. So, yeah. You can get what's called a shot. And then at 7.30... You go to work, and for me, that means I go go to the law library. So this is interesting as well. You can see a lot of pruning and, and messing with hair. So they just take that in. That sort of like how she how she's she she wants to sort of come across how uh, or, or self grooming of how she looks to the camera, even at prison. So there's a lot of fidgeting around as well. But she's just mentioning there what she does in a day, which was law. So she's um, her job is is to go to the law library. So this to help people. So this sort of puts her up on a pedestal already, helping people uh, to help people. So they have detainers, or they have warrants, or they're trying to appeal their case. And uh, let's see, get a compassionate release. Or they ask about the First Step Act and how credits are applied to their time, that sort of thing. And they answer those types of questions. It's interesting as well uh, where uh, I access and cues are. So people who've studied um, NLP will know this, but when she recalls, it's up into her left 
um, her eyes go up and to her left. And that's just something to note when she's recalling information. I also help people file out their administrative remedy. Um, and that is until 10 o'clock when they then, you have to come. I don't know about you, but she's making me feel fidgety. I'm watching it going, is she dirty? I don't know, but it's making me feel like, Ugh. Back. Uh, and they call lunch. is around 10.30. The portion control is very odd. And then because I... Just pick it up on there. Um, it's what they call lunch, and the portion control is very odd. So what does that mean? Does she get a lot? Does she get a little? I don't know. But, you know, that those words that are selected there are, are something to pull apart and look at. If Well, if you wanted to, of course, but it's, it's, it's strange. Uh, on an, their meat diet, they're supposed to have either hummus or cottage cheese or um, tofu for you, but mostly... I'd say about 95% of it's... So she's on a no-meat diet. So again, you kind of expect this from... Um, so the, the demographic where she's come from as well. And so, yeah, you, law, helping people, no meat diet. And I guess that all sort of goes hand in hand for for her upbringing as well. Um, you know. If it's anything, or, or beans. It's, and I'd say 95% of it's, it's beans. And then otherwise you have like a tofu substitute. Tofu and beans substitute? <laughs> I don't know. And the tofu has no season, there's no seasoning allowed, so there's no salt or pepper or anything. So it's, it's, Blanders. it's beyond t tasteless. And then... Uh, you you kind of heard somebody in the background there going bland. I think it was bland that they said, which is uh, weird, but given other words. Anyway, there we go. Our eyes are up into the right again. I'm oh, sorry, up to, to the left. See here and here, right? So she's thinking. Go back to work at 12. And that lasts until 3.30 when you come back and you have a, a stand-up head count at four. What I don't get is why this whole question, if you watch the interview on Talk TV, you'll see that uh, this is broke down. So I broke down all the clips in here just of, of, of Ghislaine in, in prison. But what you don't, what I don't understand is why this is so prolonged. Why, what, why do we need to know her day in prison? I don't, I don't know. It seems like very drawn out. And if you are lucky, they call recreation at some point during the day. If you're at work, you miss it. So there was a very big eye block there. Um, if you rewind it back, you'll see it, uh, and that, and that, uh, that then tends to indicate that she didn't, she doesn't like that. So if you're at work, you miss your recreation, and that's something quite um, powerful in that. And if you're not, you get to go out for an hour. Okay, so this is the bit where we're talking about Jeffrey Epstein and uh, what she thinks happened to him. I believe that he was uh, murdered. I was sure he was going to appeal. Very big. Um, I'm sure he was going to appeal. Um, so, you know, it's almost like she knew that that was going to happen. And I was sure that he was covered under the non-prosecution agreement now. I probably wish I had stayed at, in England. But leaving that aside... You know, I tried to leave and start another new job and move on from the end of 98. There was a lot of stress there, a lot of blinking. Uh, the blink bank went up, um, yeah. 99. So I wish that I had been more successful at moving on because I became a banker. Oh, there you go. Because I became a banker. So another thing. So we've got don't eat meat, helping people in law and became a banker. So all these are all sort of raising her status up. I should have, you know, moved. It's odd. She's, she's sort of fidget, fidgeting below the screen. I, I don't know what that means. Completely. 
that it was so awful. I mean, obviously now, looking back with hindsight, of course, but at the time, I mean, he had lots of friends. I mean, he was friendly with just about everybody you can imagine. There was no reason to imagine that he was someone of interest to people. Okay, so next we're going to be looking at this famous photo of um, Ghislaine uh, and uh, I think it's uh, Prince Andrew and um, Goufrey, I think it, her name is. This is sort of, uh, yeah, something that's been in the media anyway, you would have seen this around. With the fake, I don't believe that, I don't believe it's real for a second. In fact, I'm sure it's not. There's never been an original and further, there's no photograph, and I've only ever seen a photocopy of it. I don't believe it happened. So, I guess what's happened there is she's been asked to, about the photo. Um, I'm sure it's not real. I don't believe it's it, it's real. These are all sort of like if if it was if it was somebody I don't know if it was you or or me. But like, no, it's not real. It's definitely you know it, it never happened, and you'd be definite about it as well. But I don't believe sort of gives you a get a that jail card sort of key if you want. And um, it's certainly the way as described would have been impossible. I don't have any memory of going to tramp. Uh, certainly not in the outfit that I would have worn. I mean, that's that's odd to say that as well. Um, certainly in the outfit I would have worn. I don't understand that. But also, maybe that's relating to the photo. Maybe that's what it is. But you'll start seeing now um, sort of uh, pacifying, uh, rubbing on her hands. So this is a very, very stressful part for her. Um, her stories have changed so many times about what happens, when it happens, how it happens with different... Upon her hands. And each time she speaks, there's a different version. In fact, if you look at her BBC and You'll notice as well, there's almost uh, this crinkle that I haven't seen in her forehead before. Um, is this like remorse, regret? I don't know. View on the panorama. Um, I believe she says that he, or I can't remember, either he or... Let's say that he puked on her face. Ah, oh, this is interesting. So he's talking about the panorama interview, pu puked on her face. You can almost see uh, a smirk appear oh, as she, she sort of finishes the sentence. So she's sort of finding it ridiculous or funny, one of the two, I don't know. That's the only time she's ever said that. Okay, so now we talk about her connection with Bill Clinton. Um, yeah. One of the most... Uh, interesting people I've ever met. So I, I have watched this before, and this was sort of really, really um, odd behaviour. But not only that, I couldn't figure out why it made me feel so weird. And it wasn't until I listened to the music, the background music. Now it's the only time that I've heard it in this whole, the whole sort of uh, episode or the clips that I've taken from talk TV, where you get this, this w almost like uh, nightmarish. Um, Music, come on, uh, in a horror film. Listen. It was extremely sharp and... She's very, very um, collective of her thoughts here. She's really, really having to think and study and use words. But the music again. Interesting and... I there's a broad range of... So, an in, I think that's an internal burp, I don't know. Knowledge on the world. You can see how drawn out that, that sort of, that statement or uh, that sentence is, it's hard. I okay. Uh, Epstein died and, and they should uh, take their and take their disappointment and upset out on the authorities that allowed that to happen. Disappointment and upset on the authorities allowed to happen about the victims. So um, they should ask the question about the victims, but, hmm, yeah. 
Did I? And I mean, disappointment and upset is really sort of lessening language, isn't it? I mean, you'd be devastated. Your your life would be wrecked. I, I would imagine if you've been through the trauma. Uh, I suppose, yeah, yeah. That, as I said, I I hope that they have some closure by the judicial process that took took place, and I wish them. time to heal and to be able to have a productive and good life going forward. You know, really, she never really said sorry or apologise or anything like that. I guess that puts puts guilt or blame on her part, so she has to think about these things. But, you know, she could say, I feel sorry for the victims, um, you know, what they went through, or, or something along those lines, you know. She had enough time to study this and think about it. So, And it's definitely one of the questions that I would, if I was in her position, have to answer or think to myself, that's one of the questions I'm going to ask me on an interview. Because this is her shot, isn't it, to put out her view to the world. And that's what I hope for them. Yeah, interesting. So this is what our friends think about her. No. I can't know what my friends will will do or won't do. So at this point in her life, you'd imagine that she hasn't got many, many friends left, or if any at all. Um, you know, most people would have sort of, I'd imagine, distanced herself from her, or, or if they are, they're definitely her true friends, the ones that are left behind. Um, so she should know what they think because they're, they're still around her or, or by her or standing by her. But I can't imagine there's many people around her right now or, or ever will be again. Um, you know, so it's interesting. It's an interesting question to ask and also an odd one, I think. I mean, my focus won't be on that. I will always turn to what I've now decided that will form the rest of my life, which is helping other people who are there's that other burp there's that burp again and also helping other people the rest of her life so halo effect or have been incarcerated but everyone is always asking who is the real g so who i've never i don't recall anybody ever calling her g so that must be a nickname who's the real g then so she likes this this is an easy question to answer see smile and also a bit of a smirk on the brother's face. Well, I was one of the best people to answer that. It's probably the people who were closest to me, like you. Oh, here we go. Deadpan on the brother's face. Absolutely deadpan. Um, she's trying to draw it in and make him smile, but absolutely deadpan. Nothing. <laughs> but uh, it's... Definitely not the person portrayed. I feel completely divorced from the person that people reference and talk about in the and all the various newspaper articles and TV shows and podcasts. And so, the biggest misconception of you that I'm the cruelest, meanest, horriblest person who's done committed crimes. She didn't need to think about that. It was almost, it come off verbatim. So she's obviously thought, just thought about it before and said it before. And you notice the, throughout the whole of this, every word was studied and and um, to the point, not to the point, yeah, to the point. And, and so it's interesting to see the difference. And that's it. And check out bodylanguagematters.com if you want to for your body language needs. All right. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.